Okay, we're going to talk about matrix multiplication, and in particular, I'm going to focus on attempting to implement this as an algorithm on a computer, as opposed to the actual linear algebra theoretical development of matrix multiplication. In this particular example, we're going to work by, with square matrices. Uh, these are matrices which have an equal number of rows as columns. Uh, n by n. In our example, it'll be a 3 by 3 times a 3 by 3. Uh, but in general, matrix multiplication works with any combination of matrices where you have a pattern where there's an n by n, sorry, n by m multiplied by an m by p would result in an n by p. In other words, the number of columns in the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. And this will allow for a legitimate or a an existing multiplication. Uh, so, basically by definition, the value in the resultant matrix C that's located at the row and column intersection, uh, often referred to as the pivot, is the sum of the products of the row from A multiplied by the column from B. So, if we were working on this first uh, element here at located at this row value and this column value, we would multiply out the values in the first row of A and multiply them times the values in the first column of B and sum up those results. Uh, this is somewhat similar to uh, a vector inner product. So, Using that, keeping that in mind, that the value at this location C is going to be dependent on um, the row and column values, uh, we're going to work our way through the matrix C by varying row and column. So we will let column advance across, and then when it gets to the end, we want to reset it back and move row down one and continue that stepping process. This is typically done as a nested loop in programming, where we have one value that resets every time another value increments. So in our code, we would generally do this as a nested for loop, where the row counter is the outer loop, and the column counter is the inner loop, and they start with the zero value, because these uh, matrices are going to be implemented as two-dimensional arrays, and since arrays in the language we're talking about, C sharp, are zero indexed, it makes sense for us to count the row and column starting at zero, and they will go up to this value called matrix size. So in our case, they would go zero, one, two, because we have a matrix size of three. Um, if you, but this code could deal with matrices of, you know, extremely large size if you wanted to. So we now know how to traverse our matrix C. So what do we do each time in order to calculate the new value in C? Well, that's going to involve us going back and talking our, walking our way through what happens with the row of A and the column of B. You'll notice that the row and column arrow in our matrix C correspond to the row that we're working in, in A and the column we're working with in B. So those uh, those index variables that we created in our for loops will allow us to know which column and row to to grab elements from. And since we have to traverse and move our way across the row and down the column, we need another variable that's going to do that moving for us. Because by definition, the value at row comma column in C is equal to, in this case, would be a of the current row times the first element, or A of the current row and the first element of that row times B of the current column and the first row element in that column. And then you do the same thing with the second times the second and third times the third. So it would be 3 times 2 plus 5 times 3 plus 1 times 6. Now, the problem with the way I have it written out here is this is perfectly valid except this definition is only valid for a 3 by 3 matrix. Well, what happens if we add a 5 by 5 or a 7 by 7? We need to come up with a way for the computer to, uh, to walk its way through this definition. So we're going to modify that definition slightly. 
and we're going to say that the value at C row comma column is actually equal to the sum of the products of A row comma I times B I comma column. So what that really means is A row I means one of the elements in this row. So the first element in this row times the first element in this column. And then the sum means we have to go back and change I and add it to the current value. So we would take 3 times 2 and then we would increment I by 1 and we would get 5 times 3 and increment I by 1 and we'd get 1 times 6 and each time through we would add that up. So let's see how that works. If I is equal to 0 then the white arrows are currently pointing to the values that we are going to multiply together. And the first thing I do here is we set that particular value in the C matrix equal to 0 because we want to start with an empty value and then add to it. So the A row comma I is the 3 here. The B column I comma column is 2. And as a result, we can say that the value at our current column and row, which is 0, 0, is going to equal the current value that it has, 0, plus the product of these two things. 3 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, so that means that this uh, storage location is going to currently hold 6 for us. Now we increment i by 1, so our pointers as to where we are in our row and where we are in our column advance by 1 because the value i has gone up by 1. And now we do the exact same thing over again and say that this value is going to equal its current value plus 5 times 3. And its current value is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15, so its new value will be 21. And then we will increment i by 1 again, and we will now be taking 1 times 6, adding it to the current value. Current value is 21 plus 6 means that the value of that particular one is 27. And we've now traversed all the way across the row and all the way down the column, which means we're done. So that value is actually 27. And we can advance to the next column. Uh, the row remains the same, remember, because we're on the inner loop. So we're working our way across. So now we're working on row 0, column 1. And as a result, we're going to work our way across row one or row zero still and you'll notice column has advanced to the middle so we're going to be multiplying this set of numbers times this set of numbers and again i starts back at the beginning so we'll have three times zero we'll store that in the value which is zero we'll now advance i so we'll now have five times five and we're going to add that to the existing value, which was 0 from our first multiplication. So the, that particular value takes on 25. We advance i by 1 again. So we have 1 times 1. We add that to the current value, which is 25. And we get 26. We're done with i. At, we've gone all the way across the row and down the column. And so we advance to the next column. Repeat this process, and you can see how the values continue to cycle through here. It's a re repetition. So again, since I'm moving I the same way every time, in my mind I should think in terms of another loop. And uh, again, when I get to the end of that row, I'm now at the end of column, row, and column. Column has gone all the way over. That means column's going to end the inner loop and so therefore the outer loop will advance by one. So row goes down, column goes down, I switches back to the original. Every time that we go through this inner loop the I is going to reset. So we do I equals zero, I equals one, I equals two, and we would find out that, that value is 52. So I'm not going to finish out the rest of these but what I am going to say is that that process is the same every time. We set the current row and column that we're working on equal to zero before we start. Then we loop i from zero up to our matrix size. So in our case, that should be zero, one, two. And we do that every time that we advance either row or column. 
and as a result, then we take the current value of the row and column we're on, and we add to that the product of the one that i is pointing to in the row and the column. So a row comma i and b i comma column are the current ones that are pointing to. So this is our summation and it runs across the values of i. So this code should be able to be put into our original code in this process. We use nested loops to move through the rows and columns of matrix C and then for each row and column we're working on, we loop I to move across the matrix A and down matrix B. And as we do that, we sum up the products of A times B in order to get the value C. In code, here we have it in C sharp code. Here's our outer loop to go through the rows. Here's our inner loop to go across the columns. That's the same thing we did in the earlier code. And here, under the part that says, now find C comma row, we use the code from the previous page, which is these two lines, set the value equal to zero, and then sum the products as we move across the row and down the column. That's it. There's matrix multiplication in what, three or four lines of code. And here's a few definitions of the original um, variables.